So, I'd like to share my story. I go by the name of Cain. Um, I'd tell you my full name, but, you know, there's certain people that I, I don't really care to, to, look, to, you know, to look me up. But, I definitely like to tell my story uh, just so everybody can kind of understand where I'm coming from and and why I'm fighting for this AMC movement. I was born and raised in a extremely abusive home uh, by a father that was a uh, biker and he was a pretty evil man. Uh, he had a serious drinking problem. And when he would get drunk, he'd come home. Uh, he'd beat me and my brother. Uh, he'd strangle my mom out, beat her. Uh, it, it was a pretty, pretty nasty ordeal. Um, one of the worst things that I remember him doing to me and my brother uh, is when I was three years old and my brother was four. Uh, we both had the whooping cough. And one night we were both coughing and my dad come home drunk and he didn't care to hear the coughing so what he did was he came upstairs and he tied me and my brother's hands and feet together with socks put us against the wall and beat the crap out of us and uh, it's probably the worst memory that I have of him uh, needless to say uh, at the age of four he he my mom got a restraining order against him and uh, police officers took him to jail uh, for breaking that restraining order and he uh, ended up killing himself in jail. He, he ended up hanging himself. When I was five years old, my mom remarried uh, to a man who was a two-time uh, uh, Vietnam vet. Uh, uh, he did two tours in Vietnam. He he had just gotten out of a marriage himself where his ex had pretty much taken everything from him, including his kids, his daughters. And when he married my mom, he adopted me and my brother. So I was actually adopted at the age of five. Um, had the name changed, the whole nine yards. But as a kid growing up, I had a lot of issues, uh, a lot of anger issues. Um, definitely, I was, I was mentally unstable. Um, threatened to kill my teacher at, at the age of, I think it was seven, or no, it would have been the age of probably nine or ten. It was third grade, but I, I remember threatening to kill my teacher with a pair of safety scissors. And, and I'm sure you all know what safety scissors are. Uh, you probably couldn't kill a snake with safety scissors. But needless to say, they ended up putting me into a behavior disorder class that, uh, I attended till I was in sixth grade. And then uh, from sixth grade on, they integrate, reintegrated me into the regular classes. Uh, I went through those classes, graduated, and then uh, I joined the United States Navy. Now, growing up with my stepdad was something else. Uh, my stepdad, just to give you a little background to him, he was in the uh, Army for almost nine years. Uh, he was an airborne ranger, uh, military police, uh, two tours in Vietnam, uh, took shrapnel to his wrist, got shot in the chest, uh, uh, recipient of, of many, many medals. Uh, he, he seriously struggled from PTSD. He was a really good man. Uh, he was pretty rough around the edges. Uh, he he worked for the government for 22 years, roughly, uh, was GS-12. He was a uh, GS-12 uh, ranking in the U.S. government. Uh, he worked for the Department of Defense. Uh, he inspected nuclear cores and submarines, uh, inspected some of the O-rings and stuff on, uh, uh, on the space shuttles for NASA. Uh, pretty prestigious job. Uh, after he retired from that, he became a police officer for, I want to say, eight and a half years, nine years, something like that. So 
given the fact that he was uh, uh, in the military, he worked for the government and was a police officer, uh, just that alone should it tell you what kind of person he was. He was pretty strict, um, you know, so <laughs> growing up with a man like that was not easy. Uh, he wasn't a bad man. Like I said, he was rough around the edges, uh, didn't really know how to handle this, the issues that he had going on with his PTSD. But, you know, he did the best that he could. He, he raised me and my brother, uh, gave uh, my mom, a, uh, me, my mom, my brother a great home. Uh, he treated my mom like a queen. Uh, he pretty much taught me how to use every tool that you could possibly think of. I was running a, a, a power saw at the age of uh, nine, you know. Uh, I have roofed my first uh, house when I was uh, 12 years old. Um, so I've been in the, in the carpentry field ever since I was a little flipping houses, uh, you name it. Uh, but then after I graduated, I joined the U.S. Navy and uh, uh, I graduated boot camp September 11th of 2001. Um, the day the Twin Towers got hit, they handed me my orders. And then I knew uh, right away that I was going to end up spending some time overseas. Uh, my... Uh, as you would say, MOS, uh, Navy calls it a school. I was a gunner's mate. Uh, I was a weapon specialist. I uh, dealt with small arms, everything from uh, a 9mm all the way up to a 25mm. Um, and then there were some weapons that were bigger than that, but I didn't specialize in none of them, like the 5 inch that they have on a lot of the destroyers. Uh, I finished the top of my class in gunner's mate school, and they put me into a secondary school called VLS, uh, Vertical Launching Systems Technician. Uh, now, when I originally signed up, I didn't get a, a sign-on bonus. Uh, the uh, recruiter that I had was a SEAL. Uh, he was getting ready to retire, uh, and he got me in uh, with a guaranteed spot in basic underwater demolition school in Coronado Island. Uh, unfortunately, when I went through boot camp, I couldn't swim well enough to pass uh, the screening test. So uh, I learned how to side stroke uh, and came back. And since I wasn't guaranteed for it, uh, the chances of me getting into a SEAL team or uh, into bud school was, was uh, uh, slim to none. When I got into my duty station, I signed up and volunteered for a team that they called SWIC, uh, which is a Special Warfare Combat Crewman. They sent me to training down in Blackwater. Uh, I came back up, went through some training in Dam Neck, and then was over in Little Creek for quite a while. Um, uh, it would be SBU-22s, the team that I was assigned to. I spent uh, 18 months in Iraq. Uh, I ran up and down the Tigris and the Euphrates in a, in a small attack boat. I laid cover fire down for seals, did steel extractions, seen some pretty hairy stuff over there, seen some pretty, pretty nasty, nasty things, and uh, lost some brothers over there. Uh, I came back, I was pretty messed up, and uh, I ended up getting into some fights because I was struggling, and I ended up getting a, a bad conduct discharge. Uh, which isn't a dishonorable, uh, but it's not an honorable either. Uh, as a matter of fact, it took my benefits from me, my medical benefits, mental, dental, you name it, all of it. Uh, so, needless to say, I, I had a, a huge resentment against the, the military and the VA uh, for tossing me out like garbage. Uh, literally six months before I was supposed to be uh, discharged with an honorable, uh, I took off because, like, they, my unit, when it comes to uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, it does a hush-hush thing. Uh, everybody wanted to kind of doctor me inside the unit uh, because there were certain things that we did over there that uh, uh, you had to have a certain classification to be privy to. Um, and which I, 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 I'm not going to get into none of that. I, I have a hard enough time dealing with it without even talking about it. Um, but anyways, I... I, I was discharged, uh, decided that I was going to move, uh, move back home, moved back home for a while, uh, worked as an IT for a little bit, worked as a dock foreman for a little bit, then I moved back to Virginia, 
and was engaged to a, a woman there and uh, we ended up breaking up. She went back to Missouri uh, and I was hanging out with a, my best friend at the time uh, named Lewis Connor and he ended up committing suicide one night because he just was psycho psychologically unstable or mentally unstable. So I, I, I took that pretty, pretty harshly. Uh, a couple years later, uh, living in, in Missouri, uh, I met a girl, uh, and we got together for a while. Uh, we were together for about three years. Uh, we were planning on getting married, and she ended up committing suicide herself. So, you know, I took that hard, too. Um, there was three people in my life that committed suicide. My, my dad, uh, my best friend, uh, the girl, uh, you know, that I was supposed to marry. Um, uh, dealing with that, dealing with the PTSD, uh, I was pretty much a loose cannon, man, uh, real bad. Um, ended up getting into some trouble. I ended up doing some prison time, uh, and that was over a horse, of all things. A uh, horse of mine got stolen uh, while I was in Virginia, and the people that were looking after my horse told me that it got stolen. Uh, however, when I called and talked to somebody, uh, I found out that they had sold my horse, not stole it, but sold it. Somebody, instead of somebody stealing it, they sold my horse. And that was my buddy. Uh, I had to shoot his mom uh, four weeks when he was four weeks old. She was uh, a 29-year-old mare. Uh, the stud broke in or broke out of his pen and got with her and knocked her up. And when she had her foal, uh, it was too much for her. So she kind of hit the ground, couldn't get back up. So I bottle fed him and raised him from four weeks old and up. So he was that horse was my buddy. Well, the people that, that ended up selling him, one was a, a chief of police, uh, and you know I did some modifications for some on some of his weapons, because uh, you know that's just what I did in the military, is, is, is I uh, rebuilt, uh, maintained uh, weaponry, and I was pretty pretty good at it. But needless to say, it didn't go my way. I went down to collect some money. Uh, for the horse that he sold, and I ended up uh, going to prison uh, for a 10-year bid. Now, getting out of prison, I struggled, uh, you know, mentally. I was already mentally struggling uh, coming out of the war, uh, people killing themselves. Uh, I guess I, ha I had it in for myself uh, to off myself one day. I guess God decided that he had bigger plans for me. But, you know, at this point in my life, you know, I had gotten engaged again. I got engaged uh, two years ago with a, a, a woman that I, I truly gave my heart to, that I loved with every, every part of me. And this last year, uh, I got out of the carpentry business and started doing some buying and selling on, on eBay. Uh, we were making really good money on eBay. Uh, this last year, we made close to 140 grand. But at the time, that female I was with ended up getting hooked on this stuff called Kratom, uh, which is some legal, I think it's like some sort of opiate crap that you can get from a gas station. But she got so addicted to that stuff that literally in nine months, she spent 50 grand. And uh, we ended up going separate ways. But in the process, she took everything that I owned. Everything that I had, uh, took my truck, uh, took all my belongings, took my tools, sold my dog, you name it. So right now, uh, because I lost everything, the house, the fifth wheel, the land, we had 20 acres, uh, planted a bunch of ginseng on it, had a seven year, you know, plan. I. Uh, lost it all and so I went to the hospital uh, seeing the psych doctors got my medication readjusted things are going great now they put me in a program uh, to where I can stabilize myself mentally so while I was here 
I started to get into some stocks and downloaded Weeble and started learning a little bit about uh, buying and selling stocks. You know, pretty much everything I've ever put my mind to, I've perfected. Uh, and, and really, in a way, being a perfectionist has kind of hurt me. Uh, but with that said, I've learned to just make everything work and, and, and be the best that anybody could be at it. And uh, my late father-in-law, he, uh, he taught me a little bit about st stocks. He was a teamster uh, up in Chicago, so, you know, <laughs> take that for what it is. But he retired and he got into stocks and he was watching, the, you know, uh, the market every day and was buying and selling and, and he did really, really, really well. And while I was taking care of him before he died, uh, he taught me everything that he knew. So when I got into this program, I realized that we could download platforms to where we could be our own brokers. And that's when I, I started buying and selling stocks and, and it was, I mean, it was pretty good. It was pretty cool. Uh, I, I made a little bit of money doing it and uh, I seen the AMC stock and I heard all this hype about it. I heard all this hype about GME uh, and what GameStop it did and, and uh, needless to say, uh, I took everything that I, that I had and I invested it in, into AMC. Now, the movement that's going on with AMC and the whole purpose of it is something that just blows me away. You know, it's like David taking on Goliath between retail investors and, and the big financial institutions. I mean, giving power back to the little people is, what, is, is, is just something that is awe-stricken me. You know, they, they, the big financial institutions have always had a way to manipulate the market and make money, even if it costs the business everything they had and, and pushed them into bankruptcy. You know, it's crazy. And, you know, it's really awesome to be a part of a movement that is more, it's, it's, it's more than just about money. You know, there's, there's real purpose behind it. And I'm really glad to be a part of it. You know, I, I'm ne I've never done this YouTube stuff. I've, I've watched YouTube videos, uh, Trace Trades, uh, Zip Trader. Uh, and there's several others that I watch and these guys they know way more than I do when it comes to uh, stock trades so I'm always watching their videos every day to to find uh, out what's going on with the stock and the news and, and blah 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 so anyways I invested in AMC and the reason that I invested in AMC was not only to be part of the movement but to, to find some sort of financial freedom for myself you know, I'm 38 years old. I've lit, lived a hard life. I, I've put my work in for the, the Navy. Uh, I spent time overseas in war. And, I mean, I could go on and on about war and what that crap was really about, about Afghanistan uh, being all about it. Afghanistan is nothing but a pharmaceutical war. Uh, you know, Al-Qaeda was originally paid by the CIA to take out the, Russian, the Russians and push the Russians out of Afghanistan back in the 80s. And then, of course, the U.S. moves in, uh, assumes control of Afghanistan, which produces 90% of the world's uh, opium. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's, it was a dirty war. And then, of course, they wonder why the Al-Qaeda gets mad and, and turns against us, because we turned against them originally. Now, that's not saying that I support Al-Qaeda or nothing like that, because trust me, I don't. Not one, not one bit do I support any, any terrorist regime. But people have to understand what the bigger scope of the issue is. You know, they have to, they have to know the facts behind it. Everybody is so easy. It's so easy for everybody to jump on the bandwagon and be like, oh, yeah, I hate this person because so-and-so that I, I look up to hates them. So I hate them. You know, instead of looking for the basic facts themselves and try to understand, uh, understand what the full scope of the situation is, they jump on a, a, on a wagon. And that's so stupid. That's, that's what this economy is all about these days, is jumping on the bandwagon because they heard so-and-so say something about this or so-and-so say something about that, so then they support the cause or the movement. And it's, it, and it's an ugly thing. It, it's, it's like, you know, it's like somebody going to church on Sundays and saying they're saved uh, because they listen to some preacher tell them what God says, and then they go home and they live a horrible, sinful life, and then thinking, oh, well, I'm going to heaven because I go to church on Sundays. Well, it's... it's 
if you're anything about God and anything about Christian, you know that it's way more than just that. But this isn't about religion. This isn't about uh, Christianity or nothing like that. Maybe I'll make a video at some point about that and what God's done for me and my testimony of it. But right now, I just want to kind of touch on AMC. You know, I do want to make money with AMC. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I am going to hold, and I'm going to hold to that floor. I promise you that. Just along with them silver hand, uh, 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 silver, silverback apes and those, those diamond-handed fools out there. You know, I'm right with them. I'm all about the cause. I'm all about doing uh, what they're doing and, and pushing this movement to places where nobody's ever seen. This is something of history, man. This is, this, this is history in the making, man. You know, the little guy... Uh, knocking down the big guy with a stone and right in his head, man, knock him straight down, and 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 giving power back to the to the, the small people. You know, I'm so sick uh, of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor. I'm so sick of that. And this movement movement has actually given me the opportunity to feel like I'm part of something good again. Because when I was in combat, I didn't. And, and I realized and found out what everything was really about, politicians and pharmaceutical companies, man, it hurt me. It hurt my heart because I fought for a freedom for my people, and they turned it against me and made me do something that I didn't agree with. I didn't sign up for that shit. I didn't sign up to go over there and fight some politician's war and watch my battle buddies die. I didn't do that shit. I thought I went over there to fight for freedom, for the freedom of the U.S., so you guys could have some freedom. But what I found out was it had nothing to do with that. So the only people that I was able to fight for over there was my battle buddies to my left and to my right and all my six. And most of them I lost. You know. And that's true shit. Excuse my French. But it is what it is. You know. But this ain't, like I said, this ain't about that. But... I want financial freedom. I want to be able to make enough money to where I can sit back and retire and, and do some hobbies and, and support some churches. And But I really want to take AMC, when it, once it's finished, to another area in the stock market and do the same. And then another area and do the same. Because, man, it's this movement is more than just about making money. You know, GameStop was, was going down. AMC was going down. You know, these, these short sellers and the, these naked short sellers, man, they're pushing these companies into the ground, bankrupting them, and then, you know, filling their pockets full of money because they don't care. They got billions of dollars, trillions of dollars. So who cares about AMC or GameStop? You know, they don't play video games. Their idea of playing games is betting against companies that are trying to keep their head above water, especially after after COVID-19 hit. All that crap, man. You know, so I'm all about sticking it to the big financial institutions. For real. Uh, the fact that we saved these two companies, uh, the fact that we kept people from losing their jobs, you know, we even gave AMC the chance to grow and, and create more jobs rather than them going bankrupt. Man, this is awesome. We're the little people. We're, we're the little people making the biggest moves in our economy. And if we can take that momentum from AMC when it's finished and done to another area of the market, like pharmaceuticals, uh, advancements in medication, uh, advancements in technology, there's so many great corporations and businesses out there that are going under because of being shorted that have the ability to create some really awesome freaking things and push our economy into the stratosphere. But they need people like you and me. They need retail investors to take control of the company, to give them that money so that they can go and do the research that they need, so they can go and find advancements in, in medicine to battle cancer and to battle Alzheimer's to battle uh, uh, just just leukemia. I mean, all these little children, man, and these companies that, that are trying to, to get the funds together to, to, to progress in their research for medications and technologies, you know, they can't do it because they get their stocks knocked completely down into the ground, so they can't afford it. And then retail investors like us, the army of apes, 
come. The army of apes. And what we're doing, this movement that we're pushing, this is the history books, baby. This is the history books. We're doing more for our economy. We are doing more for our economy than the big financial institutions, man. That's amazing. David doing way more than Goliath. All these big financial institutions, all they do is bet that the stock is going down. They bet the stock is hitting ground. While the retail investors go in to put this, push the stock up. I understand the idea of shorts. I understand that it keeps the balance between retail and institutions and, and keeps the, the stock at a reality you know, price figure. I get that. But these synthetic stocks, these naked shorts, the illegal activities that these big financial corporations are doing, it's ridiculous. They're making billions and billions of dollars off the backs of small people like you and me and putting businesses under, bankrupting them to where they can't do nothing. What are they doing to help our, our country? What are they doing to help our economy? Nothing. They're robbing people like you and me of our money. It's as simple as that. So I'm all about this movement, man. I'm all about the movement. But the one thing about this movement that, that saddens me is the fact that the financial institutions have actually made apes turn on apes. Now, I don't support that one bit. I understand that GME was there first. Okay, I get it. And I understand that there's other apes that are in other uh, stocks. I get that too, you know. I really do think that the other stocks like Clove uh, and Wendy's, that was just a deterrent to cause our numbers to split among other stocks so that the, the uh, shorters could focus on AMC and shove it down when we don't have the volume to keep it up. They almost succeeded with that. But as an ape, I want to tell you something. I've been in it for a little while, the AMC stock. I've been in it since $12. And I don't care about the money, man. Yeah, I, I, I would like to, to retire and, 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 and be comfortable and, and financially free. But man, I'm going to tell you something. It ain't about the money. It's about the movement and what we can do in this movement. That's what's important. Saving jobs. Kickstarting this economy. What else could we do after AMC? Just imagine what we could do as retail investors, taking control of all stocks in the company, man. Imagine what we could do. The picture is so much bigger. We need to work together. We need to stop fighting each other. Divided we fall, united we stand. United we stand, divided we fall. It's always been like that. Just don't let the financial institutions break us apart. Stick together like all apes should, man. Put in the work. Money ain't taken easily. You're gonna, you might see more dips in the future. But this week, I think, is going to be a pivotal moment for AMC, and we're about to find out. Come Friday, I think it's 414000 in the money calls. Let's put them in the money. What they need to be in the money. So let's do it. I appreciate you all listening to my story. I didn't mean to banter on and, and run on and la, la 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 about my life, but I wanted you to understand as a little guy where I come from because I know many of you come from the same areas. I know many of you struggle to pay your bills, to feed your kids, to make things work. You know, it's a it's a day-to-day -day struggle. But when it comes to the stock market and how easy it is to get into it with all these different platforms, you know, we have a chance and opportunity to sit back and breathe and make some money. In doing so, we're going to have to battle the big financial institutions. But together, we can do it, man. Just believe in yourself. Believe in your convictions and do it, man. You got this. We all got this. AMC to the moon, baby. AMC to the moon.